Hi friends. Uh, welcome to another lesson <laughs> with Miss G. So we are still exploring the world. We're putting on our explorer hats on and we are going to enjoy all the different things that are happening in the world. Today we're focusing on the one continent of Europe. So our question, what we're going to be thinking about for today's lesson is what is happening in Europe? What is Europe all about, right? And of course, we're always thinking about what makes it so interesting, why people talk about it, what, what happens when you live there. So these are all the things you'll be thinking about as we're going through. Um, so now, my friends, Miss G's going to play the song again. And the reason why I keep playing this song is that I want to get into your head that there are seven continents. And continents are what? They are land masses, okay? So this is a continent, this is a continent, and how many do we have? Ooh, I hope you're saying seven, but let's listen to our song to jog our memory. North America, South America, Africa, Europe, and Asia, Australia, Antarctica, seven continents. North America, South America, Africa, Europe, and Asia, Australia, Antarctica. Now it's time for the first two starting guys. Now the first thing I want to bring to this class is that a continent is a large land mass surrounded by great big bodies of water called oceans and sea. So why don't we start with North America, leading Mexico, United States, and Canada. Then we can move south past the equator to South America, where the heat is greater. And speaking of heat, the next continent is blazing is Africa, where the animals are amazing. Next is Europe, and then there's Asia. Together there the largest land mass because they're neighbors. And we can go to Australia down under awesome. where the Sydney Opera House is a known world wonder. At last is Antarctica down at the bottom. The whole thing is frozen like Elsa and Anna. North America, America South America, 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 Africa, Africa, Europe, and Asia, Australia, Antarctica, seven continents. Back to the starting gun. North America, South America, Africa, Europe, and Asia, Australia, Antarctica. Now it's time for us to depart. I like the depart of the part. So friends, <laughs> what do you notice about Europe and Asia? We know we have our seven continents. We know Europe and Asia are a part of it. But what do you notice about these two continents that's different from the rest? Well, they're connected, right? Every other continent has some sort of water dividing it. These two are connected by land. So, how do we separate them a little bit? Well, we think of our compass. Remember, the compass tells you what's north, south, east, and west, right? So, if you look at it this way, Europe is on the west side. Asia is on the east side. <laughs> so, we say Asia's in the east and Europe is in the west. That's how we divide the two because they are so close together. So, just remember Asia east. Europe West, Asia East, Europe West, okay? And this is a compass. Can you repeat after me? Compass. A compass tells you which direction um, you're in or where you're going. So now, my friends, we are off to Europe, back to Europe. Now, as we go into this, um, I want you to think about how headings stand out from the rest of the text, right? There's a way that headings stand out, and if you remember what headings are, they tell you what the story's about, right? So this one says, people of Europe, each country has its own language, foods, and customs. In Germany, people speak German. They celebrate a festival called Oktoberfest. Where is the heading? Dun, 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 dun. It's on top, right? All, a lot of informational texts, the ones that teach you, Put their headings on top. Do you see where the heading is here? If you remember your body, the thought about the body, where is the heading? Is that your body or is that your head? The heading is your head, right? So that's on top. So this heading says places to see. How about here? Where do we see the heading? Good, here, right? That's because it's blue and it's bigger and it tells us about what the section will be about. So this one says land and water. Europe has forests, trees, 
uh, has forests. Trees grow in the forest and many animals live there. But she didn't see that period. So this land and water is talking about Europe and the land and water in Europe. Now, we went through a lot of different headings. Now, what if I say people of Europe, places to see, land and water. Does that sound familiar? It should because Miss G just said it. They were all the headings, right? So you're probably like, why are they there? Bum, 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 bum. This is a new text feature. Can you echo Miss G? Text feature. Text feature means something in our text that tells us more about the story or helps us learn. So this text feature is called a table of contents. It lists all of the heading names, right? So here we have people of Europe, here we have places to see. So all of the headings are on one page. And why would they do that? So you can easily find it. So this one says, welcome to Europe. And it says page five. So if we turn to page five, here it is. What does it say on top? Welcome to Europe. So this helped us find this heading. Let's do it again. People of Europe, it says it's on page nine. If we turn to page nine, bum -ba -da, people of Europe, there it is. So the table of contents helps us find where the headings are. That's a new text feature that we learned. So we know about bolding, we know about pictures, we know about glossary, and now we know about a table of contents. So as we keep going, where's that heading? On top. What's another way of saying the heading? It's the main idea, right? The main topic. How does this heading help you understand the main topic? It says places to see. So what is this section gonna talk about? I hope at home you're answering. It's going to talk about the places to see in Europe, right? It's going to talk about all this wonderful things you can see in Europe. So that's why it's so important to have the heading so you understand the main topic. So here it says, there are many things to see in Europe. People visit the beautiful parks and the buildings in the cities. They visit Europe's museums to see art. There are famous paintings in the museums. So looking at this page, why do people visit European, Europe's museums or European museums? You saw it here, but they said it in the words. So who remembers? Why do people visit the museum? There are famous paintings. Very good. There are famous paintings there. That's why people would visit. What are some other reasons? They go to see art. That is true. When you go to a museum, you can see art and you can see other things. That's why people love going to European museums or Europe's museums. They come to see castles that were built long ago. So we're still in the section of places to see. So this is another reason. What, did, what key details did you hear on these pages about the places to see in Europe? So Ms. G just kind of said it. They just said all the different things you could do when you go to visit Europe, the places to see. What about my friends here? What did they notice? There are castles. Yep, yeah. on this page, they said there were castles, and you can even see a castle on that page. What else? What are some other key details? Remember, key details look like this. They're not the headings. They explain the heading. You can go to museums to see art. Good, we just went over that. We saw that museums have art and Europe is known for that. So now we're back to places to see, right? So just remember friends that uh, when you're thinking about headings and when you're thinking about key details that you have to look at the page and remember, oh, this is a place to see. The heading told me and in the words I understand why this picture is here. So at home, think about a place you would want to see in Europe. Where would you want to go in Europe? You might not want to go to Europe, and that's fine too. But if you did, maybe you would want to see a castle. Maybe you would want to see some of that art. Or maybe you would even want to go to this beautiful park and see these 
different kind of statues there. Well, friends, that's kind of it for today. But Miss G wanted to go into what to see at Europe. And actually, Miss G's been to Europe. She's been a few times. So if you guys want to, or you're going to have to, <laughs> uh, I'm going to show you some of the places I've been to Europe, okay? Um, so Europe is a big continent, right? And it's made up of different little countries inside it. So one of the countries Miss G went to was the country of France, okay? So France, here you go. You might remember this is the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is in France. Miss G took that picture at night. She didn't want to go in the Eiffel Tower because she thought the line would be too long. <laughs> um, this is called the Versailles. Um, I'm sorry, not the Versailles, the Louvre. And the Louvre has this beautiful triangle thing that lights up at night. It's a triangle uh, clear casing. And this whole big place is a museum. So remember, they said that museums, they're known for museums. Um, Europe is known for museums. This is a lunch that Miss G had <laughs> at um, in Paris. So just remember, friends, Paris is in France, and France is in Europe, okay? Um, there's also a place called the Versailles. That's just a huge palace in Paris, right? In the city. So imagine New York had a huge palace. That's what Versailles is. So Versailles, this is how it looks like on the inside or in front. And then this, all of this is called the Versailles Gardens. And that's all inside the palace. That's how big the palace is. And this hallway is known um, for Versailles as well. And it's like, it has a bunch of pictures and chandeliers. And you can see it gets super crowded. Miss G took this picture when she went too. And you can actually ride a golf cart golf carts around the area to uh, explore it. It was super fun, friends. Um, the only thing about France, which is okay, of course, is that they speak French. So it's a little hard for Miss G because Miss G does not speak French, but that was okay. Miss G made it and she enjoyed herself. Um, another place Miss G went to is called Greece. This is a country, again, inside Europe, and it's a little here off to the side. Um, so in Greece, they had this cool looking slide. So Miss G took a picture of it. It had adults in it and kids in it. Um, and there's a place in, called Athens in Greece. And Athens is kind of like New York also. It's like a city inside the country of Greece. And so they have these wonderful um, statues and things for us to see because they were made by the Greeks and it was a long 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 time ago it was so long ago friends but look it's still up that's how amazing it is um, and also in Greece they have a lot of little islands one little island is called Mykonos and this is how it looks it looks very beautiful friends and it was like super nice weather all the time it was great um, in Greek in Greece they speak Greek so again, friends, they do not speak English. They speak a whole other language, and it's something uh, to learn. Another place Miss G went to in Europe was called the Netherlands, and it's that little tiny, tiny country here. Um, and in the Netherlands, they have a place called Amsterdam. So Miss G didn't get great pictures of Amsterdam. It was super rainy when she went, so Miss G just found these photos, and it's kind of like Italy from our book. Remember in our book they said that you had to travel by uh, boat everywhere? It's a little like that. You don't have to. There are cars too. You can see some cars on the side. But a lot of people do travel by boat and a lot of people live on the boat. So this is like a houseboat and someone would live there. Um, Miss G did take a picture of her food too. And the food was very good in Amsterdam. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. You can see it looks completely different from what we know. So that's always fun to see. Um, just keep in mind, actually, in Amsterdam they speak English. So Miss G was okay here. Uh, so that was it, friends. I hope at home you're thinking about um, places you will want to go and explore. I think Miss G wants to be an explorer in a different life. So I want you guys to think about where do I want to explore when I get older, when I grow up. So before we leave, let's do our shout outs. Start from the beginning. This is Crystal. People have changed over time. Monty, go, student, where, in one room. Now, student, are, are, in lots of room. School has changed over time. Yes, Crystal. Bye. <laughs> Bye. That was so great, Crystal.
Cristo. I like how clear you were speaking. You didn't move around when you were trying to uh, show off your paper. I, you even wore the BCS uniform. Great job, Crystal. So this is what I meant, friends. I just wanted friends to show off what they wrote because you guys do such an awesome job. Great job, Crystal. Let's check out Ariana. Great job, Ariana. I know it was a little hard to hear, friends, um, but that's okay. You know, I know at home there's a lot of things going on. You have your little brothers and sisters. Sometimes they won't want to be quiet, and that's okay. I still heard Ariana. I still heard, her, heard her say long ago, and now I also see that she wore a beautiful dress for this presentation. Great job, Ariana. And I can see that she had all the topic, um, all the topic sandwich, all the, <laughs> all the parts of it. Good job, Ariana. So I know it's really low, friends. Um, just try to hear it. Uh, I'm sorry it's so low. I, I will try to figure out how to make it better. But you can see how my friends took this very seriously. They didn't wear their PJs. They were trying their best to stand up and present their stuff. Good job, guys. This is Isaac. So he did great job, Isaac. He did um, science and social studies and what we learned before. And now we learn science and social studies. Uh, it's not working with me, but great job, Isaac. I love the way you did that. You did such a good job. Again, look how he's standing. He's just showing us his paper and he remembered what he wrote. Guys, you did so wonderful. That's why I knew you guys could do this. You did such an awesome job. Even though it was a little hard to hear, that's okay, but you, you can tell that they did their job. All right, friends, I'm so happy for you guys. You guys did such an awesome job. I miss you guys, and have a great day.